Hey, it is super to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is November 3rd, Friday. Friday? We never see each other on Fridays. It's the weekend. We got things to do, places to go. I never make a video on Friday. I make it on Saturday or Sunday. But I have found myself in a very strange and forced predicament. I got an email from Schwab, which normally I wouldn't open, <laughs> but I'm glad I did because it mattered. My trading platform is TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade and Schwab did a merger two years ago, and at the beginning of this year, they closed it. Well, it is now that they are shuffling accounts, and I'm one of the accounts being shuffled. I'm moving from TD Ameritrade over to Schwab this weekend, and the Schwab email told me that as of 8.30 p.m. tonight, I would not have access to my TD Ameritrade or my Think or Swim trading platform. What? It was like, oh my God. No, I'm not talking about your video. I was concerned about that. That's why I'm doing it now. But me, I don't get any charting this weekend. You don't understand. <laughs> I need to chart. I spend hours charting on the weekend. What am I going to do with all that free time? I guess laundry. <laughs> So, I am in a predicament now because I got to give you a video and I was not prepared. I didn't do any due diligence looking for hot penny stocks today. So, what I'm going to do is actually share my personal due diligence with you. I found a stock yesterday. It came up on my penny stock scan. Just barely. My penny stock scan goes up to five bucks. Well, this stock rarely comes under five bucks and it just peekabooed the other day. Boop, and I saw it. Well, I went and looked at it and it's like, ah, this has potential. Let me tell you folks, this is a lithium mining company in Canada that is sourcing right now. Now, why is that such a big deal? Well, think about it. We in America need lithium like the whole world does, but we can't get it from ourselves. Even though we have all these lithium mining companies in America, which we've talked about a few of them, a lot of them in Nevada, None of them have got permission to start mining. Our government and our citizens are arguing about so many things we can't get the ball rolling. We only got one, Silver Peak, which has been around for 100 years off and on, but they're not producing enough for us. So where's America going to get her lithium? China? Eh, we know that's not right. We could go to South America as we've always done, but that's not our plan. We wanted to self-source, but we can't get our act together. But we still need the lithium. We're making batteries here. We're making EV cars here. We need lithium. So where are we going to go? Our closest ally, Canada. And you're going to want to be looking at lithium mining companies that are actually producing. And that's why I'm looking at this one. So we're taking a look at Lift Power, ticker L-I-F-F-F. Don't forget that third F. You'll get a completely different company up. So we are looking at a Canadian lithium mining company. The great thing about that is that's a friendly mining jurisdiction. Unlike America, the uh, Canadian government is helping these miners get to those resources. Now, the ticker LIFFF just came onto the American market in July though she's been under LIFT on the Canadian market for a few years. And we're actually going to look at both charts, the long chart, so that you can see where she's been and where she's going, and then our short chart, which doesn't tell you a whole lot, but we'll look at it. Now, yes, there are differences between Canadian and American charts, but not enough to make a huge difference. There can be on certain days, but normally not, so you can get a feel for it. Just don't look at the prices. So, Lyft finished today at $5.07. She is just now leaving Pennyville. She rarely comes down this way. I think she's going to go back up to $7.750, $8.50. That's the first price target most are looking for. So we're at $5.07 right now. She went up 1.4%, which is $0.07. Cents. Now she's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. This is absolutely, without a doubt, the most trustworthy, most transparent tier on the OTC. They audit their financials, and they give us enough information that they could easily be on the major exchange if they wanted to. 
Speaking of information, we have every green tick you could hope for over here. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. The two I tell you to always look for. Looking good. Independent directors are listed. You list these when you have plans to uplist. They've only got one place to go, a major exchange. And then a good one, a bonus, penny stock exempt. This removes the fear of them being a startup company. This says that for the last three to five years that they've been in business, they have had millions of dollars of assets or revenues and have kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven to us that they're responsible. I like that about this company. So let's get some information about what they do, where they are. We'll start off with this small one and then we're gonna jump into a recent presentation which they like to call DEX. Lyft is a mineral exploration company engaged in the acquisition, exploration, and development of lithium pegmatite projects located in Canada. Pegmatites, you've got your lithium in hard rock, unlike Nevada where they're getting their lithium out of brine, out of water. Totally different here. The company's flagship project is the Yellowknife Lithium Project located in Northwest Territories, Canada. Lyft also holds three early stage exploration properties in Quebec, Canada with excellent potential for the discovery of buried lithium pegmatites. That's a word, ain't it? As well as the Cali Project in the Northwest Territories within the Little Nahini pegmatite field. They do like to use that word. Now, to get more information about what they've got going on, let's jump into that most recent presentation. So this is what they call a presentation, a digital brochure. But if you're going to look it up, you may find them better if you use Company Deck. This is their most recent one. came out October of this year. So they tell us down here those three projects are Yellowknife, the Cali Project, and the Quebec Greenfields. The Quebec Greenfields have some smaller ones built up into them. The Cali Project, way up here north. We're way down here. <laughs> this is way north. And then their flagship project, Yellowknife Pegmatites. Now, they've got some information here, but some of the better information comes from their website. We are at li-ft.com. Again, don't forget that dash, or you're going to end up on a completely different site. So we are looking at the Yellowknife project. They tell us they acquired 100% of this back in November of 2022. So it is a very recent project they've gotten their hands on. Numerous spodumene bearing pegmatites with lengths up to 1,800 meters and widths up to 40 meters are visible from satellite imagery. It's a mother load, folks. Take a look. That is a satellite view, right? Without a building or something down there to give you some perspective, you don't know how big that is. Well, all those little bushes you see down there are huge trees. They're giant trees. They, they got a close-up picture that I think we get to see somewhere. They're big trees. And this is that white stuff there, which looks like quartz. That is the pegmatites right there. And they don't know how deep it is. They're drilling and they're going to dig that all up right there, folks. So they've got lots of it over there. We've got some more information here. I'm not skipping the management. I'm going to come back. This project, Yellowknife, is located right here around everything. I mean, they've got the major highway, Ingram Trail, right next to them. They have the railroad right there and they have the barge. They even have airports, not that they're going to make use of airports for their lithium, but I'm saying everything is around there. Unlike a lot of your Canadian mines with are out in the bushwhacks, I mean, in the mountains, out in the boonies, they got to make their own roads to get there. This one is right there around everything. So once they get the lithium, it's in route the very next day. It's going by truck to train or truck to barge. Now, I didn't want to skip over the management. That's just the way they had this presentation laid out. Management is very important, folks. It is the primary agent in the success of a business. They can make it or break it, right? So it is always important to do most of your due diligence on the management. See if they have experience. See if they have a team. See if they have any failures. You know, the more you know about the management, the more you really know about the company. 
Now, we're not going to jump into all of them because there's a lot of the team here. But I wanted to point out a couple of things. This is our CEO, Francis McDonald. He is an exploration geologist. Now, look at that picture. Does that look like a man that's sitting behind the desk? No, it does not. This is a man who looks like he's getting his hands dirty. A CEO getting his hands dirty. You got to love that about a company. The other thing that drew my attention was there is a team of guys here that have worked together for a while. Some of their projects were in South America and Africa here recently in gold mines. Now think about that. They have left gold mining and come on over here for lithium mining. Do you think maybe there's a huge demand, a huge opportunity in lithium mining? I think they think so. Now, if you're into details, if you like all the science behind this stuff, they've got lots of information. There's the picture. Now, that's a little closer. You can see the trees. They're still real small, but these are full-size evergreen trees. You can see how much pegmatites there are here, and it goes way back there. But outside of pictures, I'm no good for you here. They've got lots of information about their drill holes and geologists and stuff like that. So if you're into all of that, there's tons of information here. I'm going to pick it up right here. This is where they are going. They are currently resourcing the Yellowknife Pegamite Tite. <laughs> I hate that word. Pegamatites in 2023. They are also working on the discovery stage of the diamond drilling for the Rupert Project. I believe that one would be in Quebec in 2023. The Cali Project, the other one way up north in 2023. And then early stage exploration at Rupert and Pontax to fill the pipeline with additional drill targets for 2024. Now, we're not going to jump into their other projects. It's just good to know that they have things in the back. So as they're working on this one, pulling the lithium out, the other projects are progressing and they're going to then come to the point to where they'll start bringing in as the demand grows, right? We're going to need more and more lithium as more and more people turn to battery banks and EV vehicles and EV trucks. We're going to need more and more of it. So they have plenty of steps to go through. So I'm liking that about this company. Let's get some information now about the stock. So we're back here at the OTC markets, checking out the relative volume. <laughs> of course, when you're not prepared, anything can happen. And I don't know what happened. It doesn't look like she traded at all today. There was no volume, not buying or selling, no range at all. She's normally doing 8.7 million shares a day over the last 30 days. Today, she didn't have anything move. I know she's on the market. We don't have any problems. Looking at the share structure for Lyft Power, outstanding share count is just about 40 million. The insiders own about 1.4 million of their own shares. And the float, if all these numbers are correct, looks to be about 38 million. That's not a bad float at all. We're not going to call it a low float, but it's a nice float, absolutely. Checking out the financials for Lyft. We have nothing here, just came on the market, just getting things going. And again, nothing here. However, I did dive into their most recent financial. And even though it doesn't show up over here, it does show up here. This is their operating expenses. And of course, even if you're not making any money, you're still spending money to keep your business going. And that's what they show us here. But what caught my attention was down here. Loss before income taxes, $410,000. They tell us to add three zeros here too. And check this out. Deferred income tax recovery. This is up in Canada. The uh, mining friendly jurisdiction. They got $5.8 million in that quarter. In the nine months, they got $7.2 million. And it shows right there, net income. $5.4 million when you took off the, their loss from what they got. So they actually had revenues coming in. Now, the company also wants you to know that they are well-funded. They've got $24, $25 million to use on their operations, so they don't have any problems financially. Now, they may not show any revenues, but they do have a balance sheet. Cash in the bank, $13 million. 
total assets, $184 million, and total liabilities, chump change, only $7.8 million, leaving shareholder equity of $184 million. The company looks good to me financially. That's good for a startup company, and that's what's going on. They are just getting going right now. Let's take a look at those disclosures. I don't think we have anything over here. We do not, but we do have news. Now, the company has had lots of news from all of their drillings. They're giving us all the information about all the intersections that they're making, and they're doing real well. I would love to dive into these with you, but I don't understand most of what I'm reading. How could I explain it to you? So if you understand it, there's a barrage of information just sitting there for you. Now, what I do want to do is look at the charts. However, the American chart is so short and hasn't had a whole lot of trading yet. She's under the radar over here in America. So we're going to look at a Canadian chart. Well, I can't do that on Think or Swim. So I had to do some searching around and I think I'm over at TradingView right now. Had that wrong. It's not TradingView, it's Investing.com. I've never been here before. I had to find a site that would let me look at Canadian stocks on the charts for free. That wasn't easy to do, but I found one. So that's what we're looking at, the Canadian version for Lyft Power. Their stock, this came on the market back in July of last year. Now, this is a Canadian chart, and our chart only goes back a few months. But if we had a full year chart, it would look virtually the same. Not exact. Some highs might be a little higher, some lows a little lower, but the trend wise, it would be just like that. So this is a good representation of the company's stock. So it came on the market back in July of 2022 at about $2.50 Canadian money. Now I've already done the conversion for you. A dollar today equals $1.36 in Canada. Or to put it another way, $5 in America equals $6.80 in Canada, if that helps. So it was back in July of 2022, they came on the market at about 250, and it was in December, she hit a high of almost $12. You're looking at about 500% run right there. Then she came down, it was in April of this year that she created a new low support. We had had a low support here at about 650. She had come down here to 470, 480, and right there, that became a support. She bounced off of that, hit it again, hit it again with the rubber ball bounce. That means she came under the water and came right back up real fast and landed on the surface. But it looks like she's dipping. Looks like she dipped today. And to truly understand what's going on now, we're going to go look at Think or swim and look at the American version of the stock. That is the entire chart for LIFFF. Don't forget that third F or you'll end up with an entirely different chart. And that is the entire chart. That goes back to July 25th. She started off here at $6.33 American money. Hit $7.00. Hit that quite a few times over the next few days. About a week later, she added a nickel to it, making a new high, and then fell. She came down here to $4.73, had a jump, and she's actually fighting to get over a nine-day SMA. But it's tough when there's no other SMAs on the board. So she fell, and then look, we've got our 20-day SMA because we're getting enough data, enough shares are starting to move, that a new SMA comes onto the board. Well, it's my theory that when a new SMA comes onto the board, the price goes to it. Doesn't matter if it's below or above, it goes to it. In this case, it was above. So initially she did have a jump. She jumped pretty good here. She went from a 515 up to 660. That's not a bad jump at all. She came back down through the nine day, back up through the 20, and she's arguing right now. Our osculators say she's a bit weak, but our RSI is showing strength. That is actually starting to come up right now. Our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, at least we got more bars to look at. So there's our low, $4.73. She climbed up to that 20-day SMA, fell back down to a 9, worked that 9 to get over the 20, fell underneath both, had that big rip yesterday, and then fell today. 
and she is right down there at that steady low that that she's always on you know bing 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 she's right there right now i don't think she's going to come down any lower but nobody can promise anything ooh what's that right there that is a 50 day sma just coming into the picture right now and if my theory holds up this is going to want to get on top of the 50 so we should see another punch another spike is it going to be bigger than this one i don't know it could be our oscillators our ppo percentage price oscillator is pushing down our macd is also pushing down <laughs> but our rsi is climbing not hard not furious but it is climbing and our volume it's low we need to get some volume and you see what happens when volume comes in she does like the climb so right now she's hurting let's take a look at that five day five minute not a lot to look at here we have got two smas our nine day sma and our 20 day sma and then our strong support and you can see she is sitting on that support she hasn't gone anywhere all this time she did jump she did jump she jumped from 505 up to six dollars and 56 cents that was a nice jump and she has come back down right now and all of the osc <laughs> all of the oscillators are pushing down except my rsi do you think it's it's stuck <laughs> tap it see if it moves nope it's still pointing up so all of the oscillators really do show that she is got some down pressure right now but she is pushing up on her rsi and she's sitting solid on that low strong support this is a great bounce zone if it doesn't happen today or tomorrow it's going to happen but let's look at it down the long road too the company you saw it from the sky from space how much lithium they are going to be pulling out of the ground and they are starting that right now they have just come into america come in at a good time a low price this would be a good time to at least get a starter position you see some and you know the other lithium companies have been popping but they're not producing the american ones right they've been running but they're not producing this company's going to be producing and they don't have to put up with any of the headaches here in america i'm liking this company i found it pretty much by accident and i wasn't actually prepared to share it with you but it wouldn't hurt you to take a look at it and please please do some more due diligence folks you know what i always say the more you know the more you're gonna grow see you folks Pa-da-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-da-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-p